Praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to the finest of the week community church. We greet you in the precious name of Jesus. We are so happy and excited that you have decided to tune in to our morning worship service. Let us encourage you with a very familiar passage of scripture. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We know God has something wonderful and something good for you today in our morning service. If you're joining us by way of Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram, please share, like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in giving to this ministry, we have three easy ways for your convenience. There's Cash App. Simply type in dollar sign TFWCC. You can also give at Givelify. In the search bar, type in the Finest of the Week Community Church. And lastly, you can give at our website. Type in www.tfwcc.org backslash give and tap on the square. Now it's time for our morning worship service. But before we go there, go grab, grab your kids. Go grab your husband, your wife, your friend, a neighbor. And let them share in the good news of Jesus Christ. Now... Let us into the sanctuary. God bless you and thank you. Can you just lift your hands and worship? The Savior of the world was fallen. His body on the cross, his blood poured out for us. The weight of every curse upon him. One final breath he gave As heaven looked away The Son of God was laid In darkness A battle in the grave A war on death was waged The power of hell forever broken the ground began to shake, the stone was rolled away, his perfect love could not be overcome. Now death, where is your sting? Our resurrected King has rendered you defeated. For to shake the stone was rolled away his perfect love could not be overcome now death where is your sting our resurrected king has rendered you defeated forever he is glorified Forever, forever. 
sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah the lamb has overcome we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah We sing, we sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The lamb is overcome. We sing, we sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God, we got to take some time and give him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Head of a host. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, he's wonderful. Hallelujah. 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 Don't shortchange him this morning. Hallelujah. Give him what's due him. Hallelujah. He's been good to us. Hallelujah. He's been a healer. Hallelujah. He is a mind regulator. Hallelujah! He is a heart fixer! Hallelujah! He's a comforter! He's a strengthener! He's a lover! Hallelujah! He's more than a friend! He's get closer than a brother! He's worthy! He's worthy! He's worthy! He's worthy! We serve a magnificent God! Hallelujah! He's inexplicable, hallelujah. He's incomparable, hallelujah. There is no other God. So there could be none like him because there's only him. All by himself, he's God. Don't need me, don't need you, don't need nobody. But he's God all by himself. And the most wonderful thing about it is that he loves us and he takes good care of us. Amen, I was listening to Fred Hammond has a song that says, he's the best thing that ever happened to me. And he said, basically, he was glad about where he was. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be in the house of God. I'm glad to be in the body of Christ. This is the best life this side of heaven. 
Hallelujah. I don't care how much money you attain. I don't care if you have my dad. You say 50, 11 mansions, but it, nothing compares to being saved, being baptized in the name of Jesus, having all my filthy sins washed away, being filled up with the gift of the Holy Ghost, and not guessing at it, but knowing it without a shadow of a doubt. I heard myself speak in another tongue as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. I thank Him for His Word that comforts, that strengthens, that encourages, that rebukes me, that puts me back on the right track. I thank God for this side of heaven, the salvation that He procured for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God. No place I'd rather be than in God. No place to be but in God. No place is forever but in God. Everything else is temporal, but God is eternal. And we're in him. Hallelujah. And he's in us. What a wonderful thing. Amen for us on today. I want to take time to say thank you to all of the finest of the week, church, for your love and your support. We all serve God. Amen. But I thank Lord, the Lord for the care that you give toward me. I love you. I thank you for the gifts. Amen. They're beautiful. And I want to take out time to thank my district elder. Amen. Those flowers are beautiful, ma'am. But I know only you, you only do things in excellence. But I thank you. Amen. For the love and for the concern and for the thought even of me. But I thank you for being here. Amen. We work us together with Christ in this church. Amen. The Lord is going to tear up Victorville. Hesperia, Apple Valley, and all the adjacent, all the adjacent uh, places, not because of us, but he's going to use us to do what he has for us to do. Amen. And I'm excited today. I'm thanking the Lord, the Lord that I'm back in the house of God. He allowed me and my husband to drive cross country to Illinois. Amen. And to see some of his beauty as we drove cross country. Amen. I'll share some of that with you. Amen. Some things that I picked up so we can share even in Bible study. But I'm, I'm amazed at how magnificent the God we is, the God that we have and serve, of how he does what he does. He kept us. Amen. It rained in some places. We were in a really bad hailstorm, but my car didn't seem to, to incur any damage. And it sounded like they were going to come through the roof. But God kept us and strengthened us. And I enjoyed being at home with my family. Got a chance to see my dad and he's doing well and my brothers and my sisters and I thank God for allowing me to come back amen to be in the house of God no better place to be amen in my mind than in the house of God amen and I thank God for being here today I give honor to the Lord for our amazing amen um, program director not program director it's, it's, that's the wrong term but uh, amen uh, minister Jerry Strigler's amen and and for our music minister of music amen uh, brother uh, Anthony Strigglers, amen, and for all the praise team, all the evangelists, amen, all the people of God, amen. We're faithful people, amen, because God has done this for us, amen. He has given us the mentality to want to be faithful and to serve him, amen, and we get benefits daily, amen. All of this that he's put in since we were here together last, amen, at least I was here. He's done great things for us, made room, set things so people can sit all kind of places now, Amen. He's filled us up, but he's not through. Tell somebody he's not through yet. Amen. Every time we come into the house of God, he seems to put something else here. And we're thankful for what he's doing for us. It's all about him. He does it for his glory. And we want to give him the glory that's due his name. But he allows us to, amen, enjoy it and benefit from it. Amen. We just thank the Lord for everyone that is here. Amen. We're going to be turning today to the book of, amen. Thank God for my husband, amen. I was laughing because normally we we drive, both of us drive. He always drives the most. But he drove all the way to Illinois and all the way back. So I was able just to look out the window, which is what I wanted to do, and see all the green. Because we're up here in the high desert where everything is brown. And I just saw green, 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 and I just enjoyed myself. And I'm just thankful for his goodness and for his mercy. Amen. We're going to be turning this morning, amen, to the book of 2 Samuel Amen. Quite a few scripts you script want to skip over and jump to, so amen. You can keep your seat. Amen. But you can write these down if you like. Amen. We're going to be turning to the book of 2 Samuel, chapter number 7, verse number 8. 1 Peter, chapter number 5, verse number 6. Amen. And then uh, Revelation, 
chapter number 3, verse 21, Romans 8, 28, and then Romans 8, 18. Amen. If you need the scriptures, if you didn't write them down that quickly, amen, you can get my notes. Amen. We're going to be going to, again, we're going to start it in the book of 2 Samuel, amen, chapter number 7, reading chapter, verse number 7 and 8. Give you a second. If you have it, can you say amen? Amen. God is good. He's great, and he's greatly to be praised. Honor him on today because of that. Amen. Amen. Starting reading. In the book of 2 Samuel, chapter number 8, amen, verse number 7, excuse me, verse number 8, it says, Now therefore shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus said the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people, over Israel. And I was with thee whithersoever thou wentest, and have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight, and have made thee a great name, like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them, that they may dwell in the place of their own, and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more, as before time. And as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, and have caused thee to rest from all thine enemies. Also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee a house. Verse 12 says, And when the days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels. And I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. In the book of 1 Peter, chapter number 5, verse number 6, it says, Amen. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt thee in due time. Amen. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Then he says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour whom resisted steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Verse number 10 says, But the God of all grace, who hath called us into his eternal glory, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Amen. A couple of more scriptures. Revelation 3 and 21 says, To him that overcome will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I have overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. And the last scripture, Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Dear Lord Jesus, we come to you even right now. We thank you for your goodness, for your mercy, for your grace. We magnify you because you are God all by yourself, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord that you have given me to share out of your word, Lord. We ask you to take full control of my mouth, Lord, my heart, my mind, my breath, whatever it is that you would use, Lord, and use me for your glory, Lord. Speaking to your people in the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask you to tear down strongholds, Lord. We ask you, to, Lord, to even cause the saints of God to look up even the more so, and, Lord, expect you to do what you are calling for us to do. We ask you, Lord, to even bless those that are sick and those that are afflicted, not just here, Lord, but those that are under the sound of my voice, Lord, loose, Lord, the man and let them go. Everyone that is bound, oh God, in shackles or chains or fetters, we ask you to loose them even right now in the name of Jesus, that we will be able to hear, Lord God, but not only that, but to give you the glory, to give you the honor and the praise, Lord. Let your anointing permeate the atmosphere even more, oh God, even through the, 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 the airways, oh God, that whoever hears this, oh God, will feel your anointing, oh God, and be delivered in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for being so good to us. We magnify you and we glorify you and we lift you up, Lord. Have your way, Lord, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Again, 
reading out of the book of 2 Samuel, chapter number 7, verse number 8. It says, Now for thou therefore, so shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thou saith, thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people, over Israel. In verse number 10 of 1 Peter, chapter 5, it says, But the God of all grace, who hath called you into his eternal glory, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, set, strengthen, settle you. Amen. In the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 28, it says, And we know that all things work together for good to them who are the call, excuse me, for them who love God, who are the called according to his purpose. Amen. And for our subject this morning, simply purpose. Amen. And for our theme, God's purpose. Amen. And if I would entitle this simply, from the sheep coat to the throne. From the sheep coat to the throne. Amen. How many of you have had this question? Some of you stated it audibly, but even in your mind, and maybe for many years, why am I here? What is my perfect purpose? What am I supposed to do down here on this earth? Why am I called, even, amen, into salvation? Uh, many people have performed great tasks and done great things on this earth. Many of them, however, did not do it to be that one that glorifies God. But their intent was to be glorified themselves, to make a name for themselves, to leave a legacy for themselves, to be noted in the history books, amen, that will precede them. There are those also that have went about doing great things in this world. Because they had a look, they looked toward, maybe they didn't even know it, towards something bigger, a higher purpose than what they were, do, were serving. And their thought was to try to alleviate the suffering from mankind in all the ways that they know how. And they've done great things. Amen. But those of us that are the church, the baptized in the name of Jesus, the filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Speaking in tongues that the Spirit of God gives utterance. Those that are called according to his purpose. We have to be those among all, above all of everyone else to understand that God has a purpose for us. The Bible tells us in the book of Colossians, it says all things were made by him. And without him there was not anything made that was made. It says for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. He said all things were created by him and for him. Amen. And by him all things consist. To reiterate what we just read even in our scriptures, it says, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God. Tell somebody I'm in the church, I love it. Amen. Amen. To them who are the called according to his purpose. The Bible declares to us in the book of Romans, the 29th verse of that chapter, it says, for whom he did foreknow. In other words, those that he knew beforehand. Amen. Talking about his church is what he knew beforehand. He said he did also predestinate. Amen. He predetermined. Amen. He had a purpose for his church, if I leave it like that. He said to be conformed, to be jointly formed, amen, to be fashioned like unto the image or the likeness of his son, that he may be the firstborn of many brethren. He says, moreover, whom he did predestinate, those that he had a purpose for, his church, amen. Then he also called. He invited us. Tell somebody, I'm here because I've been invited by God. Whom he did call, he did justify. In other words, he pronounced them righteous. Hallelujah. We were all filthy. We were all on our way to hell. But what Jesus did in his work on Calvary, 
Amen. In the gospel, if I could say it like that, he made us right and justified before him. It says, whom he justified, them he also glorified. The book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse number 9 said, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and are in earth, even in him, in whom also he, uh, excuse me, also we obtain an inheritance, being, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Amen. Tell your neighbor, amen, God has always had a purpose for the church. Amen. He didn't wait till we got here to give us a purpose. Amen. Amen. The book of Ephesians says in chapter 3, verse number 10, he says, To the intent that now unto the principalities and the powers in heavenly places might know by the, the church the manifold wisdom might be known by the church the manifold wisdoms of God according to the eternal purpose which he's purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. I want to keep reading a few more scriptures. In the book of 2 Timothy 1 and 8 it says, Amen. It says, Whom hath, whom hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our own works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. You need to tell your neighbor again. I don't mean to keep bugging you, but tell your neighbor again, amen, we are saints of the most high God. Sometimes we need to stop and remember and let that soak in who we really are. We are saints of the most high God, amen. Not according to the works that we have done, but according to his own purpose, God has made us saints. When you look at the word purpose, Amen. In the Greek, it is the word prothesis. And it actually means a setting forth. Amen. It means a proposal. It has to do with intention. Amen. It comes from the Greek word, or the Greek, uh, 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 comes from the Greek word, uh, from the, uh, amen, comes from the word pro, which means before in the Greek. And also, the, the, the means, right, amen. And it means pur purposely set forth. Amen. It was, in other words, it was a setting in view, a setting in advance, amen, it was for a specific purpose. Again, God did not wait for us to get here, amen, and then give us a purpose. Many people are saying, what is my purpose here? Well, your purpose arrived here before you even got here. How do I know that? The book of Jeremiah, God tells him, he said, before I formed thee in the belly. He said, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, he said, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Well, help us understand that God didn't get here. Let us get here and then try to figure out what purpose would you fulfill. But you came here with a purpose. Hallelujah. I, amen. I submit to you today, amen, that all of us have to understand that God has a purpose for us. Amen. How do we understand, amen, the purpose that God has for us or no that God has a purpose for us. Well, we see it every day. It's found right here in the word of God. Amen. I want to leave, amen, three points, and I, deal, I will take my seat. First of all, we must heed the call of God. Second of all, there is a process. Hallelujah. And then third of all, God will fulfill his will. Amen. Taking heed to the call of God. The Bible says, John, amen, the book of St. John, God talking Amen. To them that the Bible says the Jews began to murmur at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it that he said he came down from heaven? Jesus, therefore, answered and said unto them, murmur not among yourself. He said, no man come to me except the father which is in heaven sent me. Draw him. Amen. Amen. That word draw means to lead or to literally drag. Amen. I don't know if some of you may have been born in the church on the pews, but I know that I wasn't. And maybe it wasn't so hard for you to be led to God because you sat under, amen, the teaching, amen, from a little child. But some of us, God had to drag in. Hallelujah. 
Some of us were not coming toward God. Some of us were saying that they were running and that, that concept really boggles my mind. I didn't know we had an option to run from God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But God had to drag some of us in here into the house of God to be saved. Uh, and he says, and I will raise them up at the last day. Mm. In the book of Hebrews, uh, the Bible says, for we were made partakers of Christ. Uh, if we would hold to the beginning of our confidence, uh, steadfast unto the end. Uh, he says, while it is said today, if ye hear his voice, uh, he said, harden not your heart as in the day of provocation. Uh, God had again to drag someone in. Now, even your pastor had to be drugged in. Now, people were inviting me left and right to go to church, and I would say thank you, but no thank you. Uh, God had to get my attention, amen, in a way that I hope nobody else has to have that attention got in their life. Uh, but nevertheless, he drugged me in. Uh, and I'm still shouting today because he drugged me. Uh, hallelujah, Lord, I thank you. Uh, in spite of me, he pulled me into the church. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, he leads us, uh, not just me, but all mankind. Uh, he leads us and gives us the faith that we need to believe him. Uh, then he turn around and leads us to repentance. Uh, he shows us we're wrong. Uh, his grace and mercy uh, moves on our hearts uh, and gives us the desire to want to do right. Uh, you ought to say, thank you, Lord. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, no matter which way you got in the church, uh, if you walk in on your own accord uh, or you had a rope tied to your feet like me uh, and got drugged in, uh, you ought to say, thank you, Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, we look today uh, in my second point. Uh, dealing with the process, uh, we want to look at Brother David. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, the Bible says, uh, amen, hallelujah. Uh, or talks about the fact uh, that David was cute. Uh, he was red and little. Uh, and he was short, hallelujah, in stature. Uh, the Bible lets us understand, uh, by way of definition, uh, that his name means loving uh, or beloved. Uh, he was the youngest son of Jesse. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, we understand the situation. Uh, how that David uh, was a shepherd. Uh, can't you see the process? Uh, before David even comes to the house of God. Uh, God got him out there watching the sheep. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, the Bible says train up a child uh, in the way that he should go. Uh, and when he is old he shall not depart from it. Uh, there are two different meanings or thoughts behind that. Uh, we know that we need to train our children uh, up in church. Uh, so they'll stay in church at the end. Uh, but it also has the natural significance uh, of meaning when you see your child uh, has a man a predisposition. Have, or, or predisposed to a certain thing. Uh, if they want to be a piano player, uh, you want to get some help so they can learn how to play the piano. Uh, if they want to be a drummer, uh, you need to get them some drum lessons. Uh, if their mind goes toward computers, uh, you need to invest in some computers. Uh, amen. But David uh, was already on the outside, uh, tending his father's sheep. Thank you, Lord. Uh, we find David. Uh, as he's out there minding his own business, uh, taking care of the sheep of his father. Uh, amen. That God's plan uh, or God's purpose is rolling up on him. Uh, we understand that Israel, uh, even though they had a king and the name of king that they had was King Jesus. Uh, but they complained and wanted a natural king. Uh, the Bible says that the, that, that the Lord told Samuel uh, to anoint Saul king. Uh, over all Israel. Uh, we understand the king, uh, the king Saul, uh, according to the Bible, was head and shoulders uh, above all the people. Uh, and they were glad about him being the king. Uh, they wanted to be like everybody else. Uh, let me take a commercial. Uh, why would you want somebody? Uh, a man that's finite uh, to be to, to, to tell you which way to go and what to do. Uh, when you got a God that sits high uh, and looks low in heaven, uh, that will direct your path uh, day and night. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, but the Bible says uh, they wanted a king. Uh, and God allowed Saul uh, to be the king over Israel. Uh, the Bible talks about, I 
going to try to cut to the chase. Uh, about a time when they were supposed to go to war. Uh, amen. But amen. Saul messed up. Uh, and offered up sacrifice that he didn't supposed to. Uh, hallelujah. Because he was not a priest. Uh, we find Saul again. Uh, messing up with God. Uh, the Bible said God told him uh, to kill everything that breathes of the Amorites. Uh, amen. But Saul saved Agag. Uh, and some of the sheep. Uh, the Bible says in that one. The Bible says the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. I step enough to sacrifice. Uh, unto you. But the Bible says. Uh, that amen. Obedience. Uh, is better than sacrifice. Uh, the Bible says the Lord. Uh, snatched the kingdom. Uh, off of Saul. Uh, the God already. Uh, had a plan in, in motion. Uh, before the foundation of the earth. Uh, there was a little cute ruddy boy. Uh, named David. Uh, of the house of Jesse. Uh, he wasn't the biggest son. Uh, he wasn't the oldest son. Uh, but he was the youngest son. Uh, and the Bible said that David. Uh, was a man after God's own heart. Uh, well we find. Uh, amen. At the Saul sin. Uh, amen. That God sent Samuel. Uh, to anoint David king. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, but look at what he did. Uh, he anointed him king. Uh, but he did not become king. At that point. Uh, the Bible says. Uh, there was a process that had to be going through. Uh, the Bible says. Uh, there came a time. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, amen. That Saul. Uh, because he had lost the anointing of God. Uh, amen. That an evil spirit from God. Uh, had became to, to vex him. Uh, and he was told to find someone. Uh, that was able to play skillfully. Uh, guess who God already had in the wings. Uh, Brother David, uh, the Bible said he sent for David. Uh, and when the evil spirit would come, David would play. Uh, and the evil spirit would leave. Uh, amen. But he didn't become king then yet. Uh, the Bible says uh, there came a time. Uh, hallelujah. The Philistines uh, had set the battle in array uh, against Israel. Uh, and the Bible says uh, that they had a great champion named Goliath. Uh, and a Goliath was about 10 feet tall or so uh, and decked out from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet uh, in armor of metal. Uh, the Bible says he was walking 40 days uh, and 40 nights among the children of Israel uh, or in the valley uh, selling wolf tickets if you will uh, telling the people of God amen uh, send out a amen someone to fight with me uh, if I lose we'll be your servants uh, if you lose we'll be your servants uh, hallelujah or our servants uh, the Bible says uh, that David uh, was sent by his dad uh, I'm cutting across a whole lot of stuff, uh, but I advise you to go back and read it. Uh, sent by his dad uh, with a little bit of victual or lunch, if you will, uh, to feed his older brothers that were with Saul in the war. Uh, and he heard this giant uh, defying the armies of the Lord uh, and began to inquire. Uh, hallelujah, because he heard them say, yeah, if they could find a champion, uh, what Saul would bestow upon them. Uh, David said, begin to ask about it. Uh, and you know his brothers got upset. Uh, but he didn't pay them no mind. Uh, and he asked about it again. Uh, he began to say, don't worry about it. Uh, hallelujah, I'll go uh, against this giant. Uh, tell somebody when God want me to go, I'll go uh, against the giant. Uh, tell him I'm not scared. Because uh, it's not going to be me. Uh, They're going to face the living God. <laughs> hallelujah. Uh, the Bible says, uh, and you know the story, uh, how did a man saw and how David uh, and Goliath came face to face. Uh, and when it was time to war, uh, the Bible said David ran out to meet him. Uh, on his way, took his sling uh, and one little small rock uh, and hit him right in the forehead. Uh, and the giant fell forward. Uh, he took off his head. Uh, and Saul began to say, uh, who is this young lad? Uh, this stripling? Uh, and who's his daddy? Uh, he, didn't, he didn't remember, I guess. Uh, the same one uh, that chased away the evil spirit. Uh, that was on your life. The Bible says, amen, that Saul began to tell them, tell his, 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 the people. He began to tell them, he said, go and talk to the father. And basically, I'm going to keep David with me. So we see God's purpose begin to unfold. So now David is in the house. 
a man of the king, of which he will eventually inhabit. And so we find David while he's there. The Bible says he is behaving wisely. Yeah, this is important in the process. Uh, even though there are things that are going to be adverse in your life. Uh, even though you're going to have trials and tribulations. Uh, even though you're going to have trouble and disappointment. Disappointments. Even though you're going to have uh, situations where you cannot control. Uh, don't let it make you act like something. Uh, that you are not. Uh, you are the saints of the most high God. Uh, the Bible said David uh, acted wisely. Uh, continually. Uh, but they had a song out. Uh, where they begin to chant the ladies. Uh, that Saul has killed his thousands. Uh, but David his ten thousands. Uh, the Bible said that Saul. Uh, who was the king. Uh, hallelujah became jealous. Uh, and began to eye David. Uh, begin to be jealous about him uh, and to be upset about him. Uh, but the Bible said he continually uh, to act wisely in what he was doing. The Bible tells us, amen, in the, in the amen, chapter number, amen, 18, amen, that the Lord sent Jonathan, if you let me say it like that, to be, to befriend David to the point where he loved him as he loved his own soul. Amen. It's something about the process. God will tell you where you're going. Amen. But he won't tell you what you're going to go through. The Bible says the next step in the process was he was befriended by somebody. Y'all know even though everybody seems to turn against you, God will give you one somebody to keep you encouraged. Some, one somebody will call and check on you. One somebody will say it's going to be all right. Understand that's a gift from God. But the Bible says that even though they man, he had Jonathan there, that his father, Jonathan's father, Saul, was still angry with David. So the Bible tells us that, amen, he became more and more jealous. Amen. And David became more and more wise in what he was doing. But we find, amen, that there came a point where David was before the king and David was playing Amen. His harp or his lyre, whatever he was playing in, in the jealousy of Saul. Amen. Saul threw a javelin at David and pinned it to the wall, but missed David and David escaped. But amen. David continued to act wisely. There are going to be those that are going to throw darts at you. That's the job of the adversary. Yeah. Amen. God will teach you how to duck huh, and how to get out of the way. Yeah. But don't let that change your attitude uh, to what God is calling you to do. Uh, hallelujah. Just bear with me this morning. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, the Bible says, hallelujah, uh, the amen from the, 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 I believe it's from the 19th chapter uh, to the 31st chapter uh, that Saul was continually uh, trying to kill David uh, to the point where David had to go on the run for his life. Uh, but again, that friend, uh, hallelujah, that God had gave David uh, came all the way in the wilderness uh, in the hiding place of David uh, and, and, and encouraged him uh, that you're going to be the king. Uh, he would have been next in line because Saul was his dad. Uh, he said, you're going to be the king uh, and I'm going to be next to you. Uh, God will give you people uh, just like that. Uh, but the Bible says that David kept running. David kept hiding. Amen. All the way to the 30th chapter. We find in one instant with this run, in this process, amen, that Saul had to go in and cover his feet. And David was already in the cave that he went in in. I don't have to tell you what that means, but amen. Amen. But it says that how that one of the ones that was, what David said, the Lord had delivered your enemy in your hand. Amen. In other words, slay Saul. That's the one that's looking to kill you. That's the king, but look, kill him. And the Bible says that David did not do it, but he cut off the bottom of his skirt. Amen. Nah. But even the Bible said that smote David's heart. Nah. And the Bible says he didn't kill him, but 
when Saul rose up from the cave, the Bible says that David began to approach him and, and bow to him and say, amen, my father, amen, in other words. Because uh, David didn't do anything but love Saul. Uh, the Bible says that David bowed and talked to the king, uh, amen, to the point where the king recognized that David didn't really mean him any harm. Uh, and he apologized and said that I'm not going to be after you anymore. Uh, but you find a few days later, uh, the same type of scenario, uh, Saul is still hot on David's track. Uh, but God gave him another opportunity uh, while Saul was laying in the trench uh, with all the people around him, uh, even Abner, his captain, uh, right there asleep. The Bible says uh, that the Lord uh, put them in a sleep uh, so they didn't even wake up when David approached. Uh, but the Bible says that David took the spear, uh, hallelujah, and his cruise of water. Uh, and then eventually when he got far enough away, woke them all up. Uh, Amen. And tried it against Abner uh, and began to talk to Saul. Uh, but Saul said, yes, David, uh, truly you're going to be the king. Uh, you're better than me. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, amen. But again, uh, David was wise. Uh, he didn't take out God's anointed. Uh, he said, touch not God's anointed. Uh, do his prophets no harm. Thank you, Lord. Uh, hallelujah. Now, the Bible says, uh, hallelujah, that we don't find him chasing him uh, anymore because David decided uh, to go all the way out uh, of his inheritance, which is Jerusalem, uh, and amen, live with the Philistines. Uh, hallelujah, in the 31st chapter. Uh, hallelujah, but you find, you know, hallelujah, while David was with the enemy, yeah, in the enemy's camp, uh, amen, he was ostracized, uh, amen, he was chased by his own people, uh, and he lived with the enemy, yeah. But the Bible lets us know that while he lived with the enemy, yeah, he was taking out the enemy of his people. Uh, he was still acting wisely. Yeah. Don't turn on your brother and your sister uh, just because you may be somewhere you don't want to be. Uh, don't talk down about your brother uh, and your sister, uh, but build them up wherever you are. It's part of the process. Uh, hallelujah. Mm, uh, hallelujah. Uh, the Bible says uh, that as time went on, now, uh, a man that saw uh, was his kingdom was coming to an end uh, because God was going to allow him to be killed. Uh, and we find that Saul uh, and Jonathan, uh, who David loved, was killed. Uh, we find a man uh, that a man lying. Now, uh, say he saw Saul on the battlefield. Uh, and when he saw him, he was already wounded. Uh, so he fell up on him and killed him. Uh, look at David's reactions. Uh, he said, are you that? Are you nuts? Uh, that you would even take the king's life. Uh, the God's anointed. Uh, and you expect me to give you a, a, a thank you. Uh, the Bible said that his men uh, fell upon the man that killed him. Uh, but look at God's process. Uh, it's drawing nigh to the end. Uh, the Bible says uh, that David uh, got uh, the people of Judah. Uh, brought David to Hebron, Hebron uh, and made them king over him. Uh, for about seven long years. Uh, but David was just king in Judah. Uh, not over all Israel. Uh, There's a whole lot in between. Uh, but the Bible says uh, that there came a time uh, when Abner uh, was dealing with Ishbosheth, uh, which was a successor to Saul. Uh, a man had him killed, basically, uh, and brought the kingdom uh, back to David. Uh, so all Israel uh, went to Hebron. Uh, and made David king uh, over all Israel. Uh, look at the process. Uh, God will uh, do what he told you. Uh, God will uh, perform his word. Uh, he said he watches over his word uh, to perform it. Uh, he said he perfect those things uh, concerning you. Uh, just keep acting wisely. Uh, just keep doing what's right. The Bible says, hallelujah. Now get ready to come to a close. The Bible says, hallelujah, concerning us. The Bible says, amen, to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. And he will exalt us in due time. Thank you, Lord. He said, but the God of all grace, who has called us into his eternal glory, after that you have suffered a while, he'll make you perfect, established, Strengthen and settle you. Look at this, what he says he'll do for us. 
He says he'll make you perfect. He'll complete, amen, his purpose in our lives. How does he do it? He will adjust us. He'll adjust our frame. He'll repair us. He'll mend us. Some of us are broken, and that's a good thing. Because uh, now God can use uh, a vessel that's been totally broken to give him glory. Yeah. But he said he'll repair uh, and he'll mend. Now, he said he will establish, he'll establish, uh, he'll set us firmly. Yeah. Hallelujah in our purpose. Uh, amen. Then he says, uh, hallelujah, he'll strengthen us. Uh, he'll make us strong in him uh, and in the power of his might, uh, in the knowledge of who he is. Uh, and amen, the purpose that he has for us. Uh, then he says he'll settle us. Uh, he'll make us stable. Uh, he'll give us stability. Uh, he'll ground us. Uh, we won't be moved about uh, with every wind and doctrine. Uh, we won't be running after the gifts uh, or the signs. Because uh, the Bible says these signs uh, shall follow them uh, that believe. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, in the book of Hebrews, uh, amen, brother Peter says, uh, for as much as Christ uh, has suffered in the flesh for us, uh, he said, arm yourself likewise uh, with the same mind. Uh, for he that has suffered in the flesh uh, has ceased from sin. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, he said, though he were a son, talking about Jesus, uh, he learned obedience uh, to the things of uh, that he suffered uh, and being made perfect. Uh, he became the author uh, of eternal life. Uh, what am I trying to say here? Uh, just like Jesus, uh, our example, uh, who was perfect uh, from the get-go. Uh, he went through uh, suffering uh, to show us uh, that when you suffer, uh, hallelujah, uh, you can learn obedience. Uh, when you suffer, uh, you'll learn how to stay. Uh, when you suffer, uh, you flex your muscles. Uh, hallelujah in the spiritual realm. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, the Bible uh, helps us to understand. Amen. Hallelujah. In 2 Timothy 2 and 9, it says, Wherein? It says, I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even into bonds. But the word of God is not bound. This is Paul talking to Timothy. He said, therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain salvation, which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. He said, it is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. Hallelujah. Philippians says, Paul says, Yea, doubtless I, counted all, I count all things but loss, for there is the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ. In 1 Peter 1 and 6 it says, Being confident of this very thing, that he that hath begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. What am, I, what am I trying to say here? When we look at the purpose of God, again, God did not bring us here and then try to devise a place to put us. But we came here with his purpose. That's the key. It's not my purpose. It's not my agenda. It's his agenda. It'll work for us. Amen. If we call according to his purpose, he'll work everything out that's adverse in a good way. He'll cause the bad things to become good things. He'll cause the things that are pushed against you to become a benefit. He'll cause the ostracizing to be stepping stones to get higher in him. He'll cause love to grow. He'll cause compassion to come up. He'll cause you to be just like him. Uh, the fruit of the spirit uh, will begin to bubble up out of you. Uh, you'll begin to amen. Uh, go through and be excellent uh, in what God has told you to do. Uh, you become more like him. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, people will see you uh, and call you Christians. Because uh, you acting uh, like your father. Uh, he took David uh, from the sheep cold, uh, from the sheep pen. Uh, and him, uh, in the throne room uh, he took us uh, out of the gutter uh, out of the mud uh, out of the stench uh, where are we going pastor uh, all the way uh, to glory uh, from the gutter uh, to the throne uh, not a natural
natural throne, uh, but God's throne. Uh, he said to him uh, that overcome, uh, I will grant you uh, to sit with me uh, in my throne. Uh, from the gutter uh, to the throne, uh, it's God's purpose, uh, it's God's will. Uh, hold on, uh, don't give up, uh, don't give in, uh, don't you quit. Uh, you can't lose, uh, but God's purpose will be fulfilled in your life. Hold on to it. I know it's rough. Everything seems to be falling apart. Uh, but the Bible says uh, that when the enemy uh, comes in like a flood, uh, the Spirit of the Lord uh, will lift up a standard uh, against them. Uh, the Bible says uh, they'll come in one way uh, and flee out seven. Uh, Job says uh, he will deliver thee uh, in six troubles. Uh, and in seven, there shall no evil befall you. He has a purpose. But there's a process, but he will fulfill his purpose. It's up to him to give us the purpose and lead us through it. But it's up to us to hold on and be faithful to him. Tell your neighbor he's taking us somewhere. You may not see where we're going, but we don't need to see. God knows. He knows the end from the beginning. He already knows if you're in heaven or not. He's not waiting for you to get there. He's in heaven and on earth. I heard somebody say he's in time past and in times present and in times future. He's everywhere at the same time. The Bible lets us understand in the book of Romans, I believe. It says, oh, the depths of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments. And his ways past finding out. He says, but who has known the mind of the Lord? And who has been his counselor? And who was first given to him? And it should be recompensed to him again. He knows where he's taking us. He knows what he's doing. He's told you things in your ears. Amen. Maybe when you were a little kid, some things that he's doing in my life now, he told me when I first got saved. And I was, I was 31 years old. I'm 69, almost 70. I was rounded up to next year. Amen. And I'm watching him fulfill what he said. And I have to ask God to forgive me because I haven't always been with an excellent spirit. But you know what he did? He corrected me. He judged me. He tapped me up real good. And he put me back on my post. God has purpose for us. The problem is that we get our purpose, amen, mixed up or conflated with his purpose. He's the only one with the plan, and he knows how to work it. And he's not working it from the standpoint, this is where we are. But before he created the heavens and the earth, he's eternal. He had you and I in mind. That's enough right there to humble you and make you want to shout, Lord, you've always had me in mind. I didn't just come as an afterthought. Hallelujah. You've always been God. You were not created. You've always been. But guess what? Because he's always been God and he's omniscient, he doesn't come into any new knowledge. He's always loved you. Hallelujah. He's always had you on his mind. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Not just the, 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 few, the, 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 the time that the earth has been here, but always been on his mind. Always been in his heart. Always had a purpose for us. Knew where we were going to be right now. Sitting here holding our hands up. Some of us are going through things. But he always knew that. But if you can just hold on. And let him work those things out. What does he do? He gives us his word. When things are going haywire. What does he say? In the book of Philippians he said. Be careful for nothing. Don't be anxious. Don't be overtaxed. Don't be worried. Don't be confused. Don't go nuts. Hallelujah. He put it down in English. He said, but in everything. Evangelist preacher say, what part of all does he, don't you mean? But in everything, that means all things. He said, by prayer, come tell me about it. Then he said, supplication. Be specific. And then he said, with thanksgiving. Don't wait till the battle's over. You can shout right now. Because why? You done told God about it. 
He said, then make your request known unto me. I've heard so many people say that when the Lord talked to a man, uh, talked to Solomon, and he said, what is it that you would have from me? And I hear people say, I wish God would ask me that. Well, he did. He said, make your request. What do you want? What do you need? From me, I am God. I am the El Shaddai. I'm all bountiful. I got everything you need. I don't come short in supply because I am the source of the supply. He said, ask me what you need. Make your request unto me. Then he says, when you tell me about it, he said, I'm going to do something special. I'm going to give you my peace to hold you uh, while I work it out uh, in my own timing. Uh, the peace of God uh, that passes understanding uh, shall keep your hearts and mind. Uh, you live in God's peace. Uh, God will work it out. Uh, how do I do that? Uh, don't micromanage God. Uh, don't tell God is it time yet. Uh, don't tell God we're to fulfill it. Uh, but no. Uh, he already knows. Uh, it's already worked out. Just trust him. Just trust him. Lay in his peace. Roll in his peace. Go to bed in his peace. Kick back in his peace. Lay your head on the pillow like he did in the storm and have peace. Uh, Cause God will uh, work it out. Uh, not just cause of you and me, uh, but because it's his purpose. Uh, it's his plan. Uh, he will perform it. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Uh, while he's working it out, uh, we ought to give him the glory. Uh, while he's working it out, uh, we ought to give him the praise. Uh, while he's working it out, uh, we ought to cut a little step. Uh, while he's working it out, uh, we ought to bow on our face. Uh, while he's working it out, uh, it should be hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. 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 While he's working it out. He said he inhabits the praises of his people. In other words, he sits down in your trouble. Uh, if it's gotten over your head, uh, no, it's not over God's head. Uh, he's from the outside. Uh, look at in. Uh, whatever it is, uh, just praise him. Uh, it doesn't affect him, uh, except he likes it. Uh, but it'll transport you uh, out of the mess uh, in your mind. Just give him the glory. Give him the honor. He's giving you something to do. Uh, Y'all know how we're waiting on something. Now, we try to find something to do. Right? If I'm waiting on somebody in the hospital, uh, I'll take my phone sometimes. Uh, and in between prayers, I'll play my games. Uh, amen. But while we're waiting on God, uh, he's already given us what to do. Uh, let's give him the praise. Uh, let's give him the glory. Uh, let's give him the honor. Uh, let's tell him how much we love him. Uh, let's tell him how much we love the life uh, that he paid for us. Uh, let's remember uh, how he loves us uh, with an everlasting love. Uh, let's remember uh, how he drew us uh, with cords of a man uh, and bands of love. Uh, let's remember uh, that he loved us so much uh, that he went all the way to Calvary and died for us. Your mind doesn't have to be just empty for the adversary to play games, but fill your mind with worship. Fill your mind with praise. Give him the glory. Give him the honor. Give him the praise. Praise says to me that our God is better than anything else. Praise says to God that I trust him. Praise says that I'm not going to worry about the situation, but I'm going to worry about giving God the praise. That's what the psalmist says. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I don't have time to worry about the troubles. I'm so busy giving God the glory. I'm so thankful that I woke up this morning. I'm so thankful that I can move. I'm so thankful that I can see. I'm so thankful that I'm saved. I don't have time to worry about the stuff. Hallelujah. That God has already got in his hand. I want to work the stuff that he put in my hand. He said, be an example. 
He said, love one another. He said, tell people about me. He said, lift me up. Because if you lift me up, I'll draw all men unto me. I'm going to close with this. Amen. This thought. I told you in the beginning that God drugged me. Somebody was lifting up Jesus. That's the reason he drew me in like that. Somebody was lifting up Jesus. May not even be on this earth anymore. But they lifted him up to the point where he drew me unto him. Tell your neighbor God's purpose. Tell him. Say God's purpose. He took David from the sheep coat to the throne. But there was a process. He's taken us out of sin and shame to the throne of God. To be without, be with him eternally. We're just in the process. If you, it's all in how you think about it. If you know you're in a process, it helps you to be able to deal with it a little better. Put a little praise with that and watch what God will do for you. I don't know if it's true or not, but I think he might speed up the process. When we learn how not to be murmuring and complaining. Amen. I try to tell God, let me learn my lesson quick. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't want to be in the corner. But let me learn my lesson quick. And maybe he'll bring me through the process quicker. God is here today. Everybody's standing. God is here today. And we thank him for the opportunity to be in the house of God. We thank him for his mercy and for his grace. We thank him for his long suffering. And for his kindness, God has been good to us. Amen. There are some at home. Amen. We thank God for them. We know they're watching. Amen. And we ask that the Lord to continue to bless them. Amen. And we're going to pray. Amen. As one body in the house of God. Because we know we're in a process. But just like David was wise in the midst of his process, he didn't stop getting the victory. He didn't stop working for God. He didn't stop being an example. We have to do the same thing. But we have to stand in the gap for someone else. We have to understand that others are going through. And that's our job, to stand in the gap. Dear Lord Jesus, we come to you right now. Oh God, we thank you. We bless and we glorify you. We magnify you, Jesus. Oh God, no place we'd rather be than in your house. That in the body, in your body, having your, amen, having your, having your program, having your, having your desires in our life, Lord, having your, amen, purpose in our lives. Help us, Lord. We are a people of purpose. We are the church of God that you foreknew and you predestined. Hallelujah. And we're being conformed into the image of your dear son. And we thank you, Lord, that you desire to be with us. We desire to be with you, God. Help us to please you. Amen. In this assignment that you've given us, this life that you've given us to fulfill your assignment. Lord, bless my brothers and my sisters, Lord. Strengthen them and encourage them more than you have encouraged and strengthened me. And you've done great things in my life, Lord. But go beyond for them. In the name of Jesus. Those that are here, Lord, but those that are watching by way of the internet, whatever avenue that they're watching on, God. And let them know, oh God, that you're there for them and with them. And help us, oh God, as we continue to prepare to be and do all you're calling us to do. We thank you because you've already been so good. You've already been a healer and a keeper and a mind regulator and a heart fixer. And from A to Z and beyond, God, you've already been that to us, Lord. And Lord, I know that it's been said, but if you never do nothing else, you've already done enough, Lord. But I'm not saying that. I'm saying, Lord, keep on doing it. Do all your good pleasure, Lord. Keep working with us, Lord. Keep motivating us, Lord. Keep healing us. Keep keeping us. Because we won't make it if you don't, Lord. And Lord, bless those that are sick. Even right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, you said you're wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. It's your time and our peace upon you. With your stripes, we heal, Lord. Bless those that are bereaved, Lord. Lord, you said you wouldn't leave us comforted, comfortless, but you would, amen, come. That you go to those that have lost loved ones, even during this pandemic and even other ways that they have lost loved ones, Lord. Comfort the hearts and minds of your people, Lord, saved and unsaved. And, oh, God, bless, Lord, in the name of Jesus, those that are looking for direction, Lord. 
give them direction, Lord. You said in your words that there'll come a time that you hear, hear a word behind you saying, walk this way, walk, walk this way, amen. Lord, speak to their hearts and minds, oh God. Encourage, Lord, strengthen, fortify your people, Lord. And help us here at the finest of the week, Lord, to continue to do what you have called us to do. Your purpose, God. Not our way, not our glory, but your glory, your way. Oh God, help us, oh God, to endure. Amen. As, as, dear, as, good, as good soldiers of Jesus Christ. Help us, oh God, to serve you with gladness, oh God, and heartily, Lord. Help us, oh God, to understand that you have a plan. And you have gave us, given us the grace and the mercy and the kindness to be a part of your plan. Help us, Lord, to have that desire to please you in everything that we do, Lord. Lord, we ask you to continue to bless, Lord, the ministry of music. We ask you to continue to bless, Lord, amen, the operations uh, of this church. Continue to bless, Lord, your anointing to continue to be here with us. Continue, Lord, to bring in souls that they might be saved, Lord. Bless right now in the name of Jesus. Comfort the hearts and minds of your people. There are those that are outside, even walking the streets with you, Lord. Turn them in here, God, and then put, our, put your word in our mouth to give to them that they might be saved and they might be helped. Lord, we thank you for being so good to us. We magnify you for this day. Lord, have your way in each and every one of our lives. And Lord, we give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. It belongs to you, God. Hallelujah. It's you that's doing all the work. Help us to praise you and to worship you in the times when the adversary gets shocked. Amen. Because we have confidence and trust in you that you'll bring us through in your purpose and the way you desire. And Lord, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Remember our leadership, our bishops, Lord. Oh, God, and all those that are in leadership and even the, the natural leaders, the presidents and all of those, oh, God, that in government, help, Lord. Let them, Lord, hear you, God. You said the heart of the king is in your hand. Bless them, Lord, to know which way to go. And, Lord, we thank you for it even right now. Lord, we ask you to bless. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This time, no one in here, I mean, I'm seeing everybody, everyone here has been baptized. In Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. But if there be some maybe that is under the sound of my voice and you have not been baptized baptized how? using that name Jesus Christ amen for the remission of your sin according to Acts 2.38 and many other scriptures if you have not been if you feel the Holy Ghost after you repent it amen or if you repent you will receive the Holy Ghost but if you have not received the Holy Ghost amen this number here call this number we, can, we will come and baptize you when you repent it God will fill you with the Holy Ghost himself and you'll know because he'll, you'll hear yourself speak in a language that you have not learned or taught or mimicked with God himself. The Bible says in the book of John, it says, When you believe on me, the scripture have said, Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Amen. The Bible said it was not talking. Amen. It was, it was, um, it was talking about the Holy Ghost. But Jesus had not been glorified. But he has already been glorified. And what we have to believe in right now is even according to the book of Acts chapter Two, verse 38 repent which means to have a change of mind about sin understand that it's against God that we have sinned be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says in the book of um, Acts for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved amen baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and God himself will fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost till you hear yourself speak in another tongue amen you don't want to miss out on this this is the best life this side of heaven. I'm so thankful. It's going up probably on 40 years, and I haven't got tired yet because God continues to strengthen and continues to keep and continues to show us great and wonderful things. And I'm thankful, amen, because we're on our way to heaven. We want you to come and join us. Call that number. If you have questions and just want to ask some questions, please call that number, amen, and we will answer to the best of our ability that God has given us. Amen. So you would not have a question. The Bible says, have an answer to every man of the hope that lies within us. Amen. We want you to come and be a part. We're looking forward to being, to seeing you. We have plenty of room for you to come to be a part and to come to worship and to enjoy or be joined with the purpose of God in this part of the venue. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen.